goat fuel is something that has been thrown out by Lane Kiffin before, and he was referring to Nick, to Nick Saban. And Nick Saban has this quote talking about rat poison. And we all know what rat poison is. Nick Saban says rat poison is essentially stuff thrown out by the media where you're saying good things about his football team. You're saying, wow, Bama can't be B. You're saying Bryce Young can't be stopped. And that seeps into the locker room. And if you buy into that, it ends up, you know, doing what it would do to a rat. It starts to poison you. It starts to decrease your level of play. We find ourselves in an interesting predicament where Alabama won a New Year's Six Bowl game and people are starting to talk about Alabama like they're on the decline. Now, Nick Saban has, at this point in time, retooled his staff with two new coordinators. And it, weren't, it wasn't the two names that you would necessarily expect. You hired Tommy Reese from Notre Dame to be the offensive coordinator. You hired Kevin Steele away from Miami to be your D.C., now, these weren't splashy hires on either front. And the best way I could break this down is Nick Saban is doing things his way. And in any walk of life, when you decide to do things your way and tune out the external noise and everybody has an opinion on what you're doing, and you block it all out, you do it your way, there's some added pressure. There's some added pressure with not following the crowd. Nick Saban however, is no stranger to pressure. He's also no stranger to doing things his own way and having a lot of success in doing things his own way. And I would just also say this, smart people, elite people, like the 1% of the one percenters, the Steve Jobs, the Elon Musks, whatever profession you're in, smart people trust their gut and they block out the noise. There's a reason why nobody else is on Nick Saban's level. You don't win seven national championships by doing what other people say, by taking an overwhelming amount of outside advice. You listen to people you trust. I'm sure Nick Saban processed this with his cabinet, more or less. But to the same token, Nick Saban is in his status because he's trusted his gut. He's had elite level evaluations of both coordinators and players alike. If there is a filter you're going to trust. If there is one person in college football you're going to trust to make decisions for the betterment of not just the sport, but how about your team? It's Nick Saban for me. So I'm trusting Nick Saban right now. When you don't have success, what do you do? You revert back to what has worked in the past. What's worked in the past for Alabama? Running the football? And then Kevin Steele has been a coordinator for him before and had success as well. 2007, he was the D.C., that's what I think they're going to trend towards, being vintage Alabama. And I, don't, I say vintage very lightly, being the version of Alabama that we've seen before, being bully ball Alabama, being physical, control the line of scrimmage Alabama, and letting their players maximize their ability and not, not having to have the coaching staff get in the way. And I don't pretend to be within those meeting rooms or be in that locker room in Tuscaloosa, but it looked like at times from the outside looking in that Alabama, from a coaching staff perspective, kind of got in the way of their five-star talent. It's not a matter of personnel. We've said this multiple times on this program. It is not a matter of ingredients in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. You have five-star ingredients. The way it was put together, the recipe, that was where there was something left to be desired. I'm not excusing the players for performance, but I am saying... If you're going to look for blame to be shifted, do you blame the five-star players within that locker room, or do you blame the individuals that are putting those five-star players supposedly in position to succeed? So Bama, in my opinion, is reverting back to what they have been, what they've been successful at. Going back to what you know if you're Bama and if you're Saban. If you have not yet subscribed, we'd love to have you a part of this program. I won't ask too much more than that. We'd love to have you here. We talk college football all the time here, every single day, live on Tuesdays, live on Thursdays. Also, feel free to hit me in my DMs on Instagram and on Twitter, at JD Piquel. We'd love to hear from you all there. So if you don't think that Nick Saban had options in hiring his OC or his DC, it's just wrong. I, I, would, I would venture to say there were people beating down the front door of Nick Saban's house, begging to be one of his coordinators. Like that is a coveted spot in any profession, especially college football. 
And there's a lot of people that were upset, and maybe today still upset, that it wasn't Jeremy Pruitt, or it wasn't Joe Brady, or it wasn't Brian Johnson. Those are the bigger names. Those are the splashy hires. I would just say comparison is the thief of joy. If you're upset with these hires today, and someone as established as a Kevin Steele, or someone like a Tommy Reese who had success in Notre Dame, who I say did more with less, quite frankly, it's because you're viewing it through the lens of who you could have had. You saw all the hot boards and you saw Glenn Schumann's name from Georgia. Maybe some of you were still on the Cliff Kingsbury train, but we all know these are good hires. These are good hires if you just take the label off of it that it's Alabama. If you take Nick Saban's name off of it, you say, yeah, Tommy Reese, good OC. Kevin Steele, proven, proven DC. Those guys can coach ball. Oh, but maybe Jeremy Pruitt was out there. Ah, uh, bad hire. Ah, uh, but we, we, we could have done better. That's not, that's not the case here, folks. That is not the case. What I would assume is happening, and this is a big assumption, I believe Nick Saban is simplifying the formula. Nick Saban is simplifying the formula in-house in Tuscaloosa, much like we saw Georgia do. Was Georgia running the most complex offense? Were they running the most cutting-edge scheme on defense or the most new mind-bending kind of offense? No. You know what Georgia had, though? Some of the best players in the country, much like Alabama. And they put those players in position to succeed. So for Tommy Reese, like we said, they're going to commit to the run game, they're going to involve some tight ends in the pass game, and they're going to hit play action once you try to creep up on that run game. They're going to be multiple. It's not going to be boring three yards in a cloud of dust football, but you will feel Alabama every single Sunday morning from the day before of what they did on that football field. That will be how they operate offensively. Defensively, Kevin Steele, historically, runs a 4-2-5 kind of defense. What does that mean? You got five DBs on the field. What does that mean? Like Lightning McQueen says, I am speed. ka -chow. That's what it's going to be. Let your athletes, let your five-star players, your ingredients go to work. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't get in your own way if you're the coaching staff. You develop to the nth degree. You prepare to the nth degree. And you allow them to play to their strengths as a football team. Let those big boys up front. Let them eat on the offensive and defensive side. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I truly believe that. Now, here's the two outcomes that we have after this season. You got one crowd over here just waiting with bated breath for Nick Saban and Alabama to lose two games. And you and I both know this. Two games, having lost two games, doesn't make you a failure of a football team. It's not a bad season by any stretch. However, it is below Nick Saban's standard. It is below the standard in Tuscaloosa. You win national championships. You win the SEC hand in hand. That's how that goes. If they don't do that, there will be a portion of this college football public saying, I told you so. Hey, didn't, didn't I tell you bad hires? Nick Saban lost his fastball, man. That's what it is. Nick Saban's lost it. And to those people, I think you just kind of turn the volume down. There's no sense in, in arguing with them. There's no reasoning to be had there. They've already found their hill they're willing to die on. That's fine. Just let it be. Another portion of the crowd, though, that when Nick Saban and, and this whole operation, if and when it works, Nick Saban, yet again, looks like the evil genius of college football. And I believe there's a very strong possibility we see him drop the mic. Just boom. Thanks for playing college football. Hired both an, an, an OC and a DC that wasn't on the top of a lot of hot boards or wasn't college football public's pick to be my next right and left hand man. However, yet again, Saban's process yield results. So I'm telling you, I think people should tread very, very lightly with what they're saying about Bama right now. It's very, very dangerous to give fuel to the goat. I think that's what's happening right now. I really do. I really do, man. I'm telling you, Nick Saban, he doesn't need more motivation. Like he's one of those individuals who just operates as one of the one percenters. Like we said, Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, 
I mean, you go down the list, you're just successful people. Nick Saban is cut from that same cloth. Phil Knight, like, he's cut from that cloth. So the thing about one percenters, they find a way to adapt and they find a way to routinely succeed. Even when they have years like last year where, oh, no, they won a New Year's Six Bowl instead of the national championship. Oh, my gosh. One percenters bounce back. I would expect Nick Saban to do the same thing. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.